great to have Mr. Osai Chinonye, and his industry is medicine and public health. Please give him a round of applause as he presents. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Osai Chiyomi, and um, I'm a medical student, and I hope you enjoy my presentation this evening. All right, um, so here is an organization that I set up. I'm currently running as a school-based organization in College of Medicine in Prince of Rivers High School. Now, um, what's the issue that I'm trying to address, and what has brought me to this place this evening? Now, it's very simple, and it's something that is within us and that we all know. And the high rate of maternal mortality in Nigeria. And then it's amazing that the figures are not coming down as some of us might need to believe. The figures are actually rising as you can see on um, the very first line of that of this slide. And then the bottom line is um, of this maternal mortality um, you can see on safe proportion in Nigeria is that these causes are preventable. It is very easy to prevent the causes of maternal death in Nigeria. All right, and then um, Professor Friday of Kunupu has said that we cannot do something else than except to reduce maternal and child mortality by 50% with health education. Now, it is with this um, health education in mind that can be prepared to my um, idea. And that is a simple, cost-effective technology that takes advantage of the mobile food penetration in Nigeria to improve maternal health and perinatal outcome by enhancing communication between women and the healthcare provider. Now, these are some of our specific objectives. Um, through this project, we'll be able to remind women about mental appointments, having them necessary information throughout their mental period, uh, reminding women of important vaccinations for their children, helping women cope with comorbid um, conditions, minimizing all class in health centers, and giving a good working relationship between workers and patients. So, how does it work? Now, it's very simple. Um, when a woman comes to a primary healthcare center, um, that we have partnered with, and then they confirm her to be pregnant. I was straight up, must have trained the health worker in that facility um, with a phone, and then um, she collects the patient's bowel data, and then her history, and then her gestational age, that's very important. How many weeks pregnant is she? And then she sends it to her server up there on her own end, and then we assign a special code to these patients for confidentiality. And then we now send messages to these patients um, based on language preferences. Now, if this woman wants um, to receive messages in your revival outside of teaching, um, English, we'll do that for her. And then we'll also send to a backup number just in case this woman um, fails to get our messages. Alright, so this is a sample message. Um, the second one there says that dizziness, headaches, and tiredness are also in terms of low iron. Take a daily iron and folic acid supplement. This should help. And then with this, you can really um, eliminate to some extent a very uh, notable cause of maternal health, which is anemia. Alright, so what's the market opportunity? The truth is, women will already be pregnant. And then in Nigeria, we have about 6 million women uh, between 15 to 49 years. And then of this number, 10.5% of them are pregnant at any point in time. And then there's also a 72.3% mobile penetration uh, market of mobile phones, according to the Nigerian Communications Commission. Now, these are my prospective partners Pharma Alliance, Nigerian Communications Commission, um, National Primary Health Care Development Agency and then some mobile phone software and companies. Now, uh, what about my competitors? Not necessarily competitors. Then these are sample um, projects that people have done and like using mobile phone. We have a similar mobile baby, something similar, but it's more of um, um, pregnancy complications and referral. Uh, we have support, um, support in Anabda. And then we also have Pharma Alliance in Bangladesh, which is something very similar to what I'm talking about. Um, so these are some of my challenges. Um, I'm still in the um, final year now, academics, funding, SMS application, cultural preferences, and democracy. And then these are strategies that um, I've um, employed to overcome these challenges. Um, notable is, of course, giving up my social life um, so that I can uh, focus my academics and then we do together. Now, these are the milestones. Um, this idea was conceived last year, August, and then I got a partnership with Mama Alliance already in October 2012. So I was able to get a template of messages. All that is left um, for me is to transcribe these messages into our various languages. I'm working on designing an SMS application right now. 
and then final draft of this is in April, and then pilot phase experiment starts in June 2013 and lasts for two years, and then work to scale up the project in May 2015. Um, so, very simple objective. Provide 5,000 women and 100 primary healthcare centers in Southwest Nigeria with 200 antenatal and postnatal messages between June 2013 and May 2015. And then, these are um, financial protection. Um, looking at about 5.7 million naira to be able to execute this project at the pilot stage before scaling up. I might not be able to go through um, the right now. But then, of course, we have SMS software here. We have a workstation where we um, have to do our work. Um, we have a website here. And then we have the phones that we might need to buy for each health center. Just one and just some phone. And then we are going to use Android phones as a backup on our end. So that we will be able to navigate through power supply. Because um, mobile phones can always be charged and we can be on 247 to receive the messages. Alright, so these are the um, um, It's a social enterprise, not for profit. But then um, hopefully, um, this should be a sustainable project, and they are looking um, at investing from two grants and, of course, out of project payment. Um, it's a new selling proposition. So, what do I want from you? Now, besides your money, I also want some mentorship, some advice, and partnership with people who are interested in improving maternal mortality, also, on um, how you think we can best go around this. Okay, and then what do you start to gain? Satisfaction in that you are addressing a pressing issue. Um, job creation for some of the volunteers and of course um, economic development. I saw just a little bit about being a political job to be an uh, attendance of the rest of the city. And I think some of the activities are best you have done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Osachimaya. So ladies and gentlemen, once again to reflect, think about it, what do you want to do so we can help this man keep a social life. He needs it, he wants to marry me. Your All right. At this time, very quickly, we're going to turn over the hand the microphone to Mr. Luasho Durojai, and his industry is ICT. Please give a round of applause as you can. Thank you, Mr. Jesse. Durojai Luasho. I'm a graduate of Maturity Geography, Best of I'm here to present an idea that was conceived about two years ago, but now we've started working on it and we've gotten to a certain stage that we need people working at for people like you. And it's called Vodgard. Vodgard is a mobile and web application for election monitoring. We, we looked at uh, the challenges of 2011 in Nigeria when elections were going on, whereby we have various results coming in from different portals without waiting for INET. So um, there, are some, there are some SMS based uh, applications that were being used then to monitor the elections. Some of them recorded higher votes more than the total number of voters and even the population of the country. So in order to cut this uh, anomaly uh, we live in Nigeria and uh, across Africa. We decided to, to build the application whereby we be able to use the mobile, the mobile phone to record videos, pictures, and SMS results and give us prompt results. So as uh, the election officer is, being, is announcing the results, we can use the mobile phone to record the videos of the, the, the results and immediately you finish recording, you just click on send from the mobile application and send directly to our server where we keep all the data. So also, with this, we can also use uh, the text, uh, the picture uh, app, the picture part of the mobile app, also to take pictures of present happenings that uh, are the pulling food. So it could be, partly uh, in case of Palos Martin, that was about to take place, and you realize, yes. I, can't, I don't want to take yeah, videos, yeah, they don't take pictures. So, uh, by then, if it comes to something, if you log us, you have evidence to prove. You can also use it. So, from there, also, you can use the, the SMS part of the mobile app also to send results by SMS directly to our portal. So, um, we are three in number. Me, myself, as the project lead, my developer, Abe, and uh, our researcher, uh, Kazim Mohamed. We've been working on this and 
we tested the testing our application presently. We are be able to upload our first we were able to upload our first video on the web portal after three years of development. Uh, but that was about July last year, but we are still publishing the app and we are still working on the back end of the app so that you can also see. Right now, let me just show you some of our sample videos. Okay, like uh, what we have here, like what we have here on the screen, this is a sample uh, of, of a video recorded from at Maryland. Now, this video you are watching is live from directly from the web. And it points, the mobile app allows, uh, to, allows the pointing of the locations of where the video is coming from. So if like this video is playing right now was recorded at Maryland, uh, it, it points their exact location. So you don't have challenges in the future like, okay, where did this come from? Where did that come from? We all have that in our mobile app. And uh, it works, our mobile app works with different all kinds of phones. It works with Nokia, Java phones, it works with Android phones, Blackberry phones. All, all sort of phones that, that has that is internet enabled, that you can use internet. So that, that um, presently we registered our web portal and we are in the process of developing our web page. Take a sample of how our web page is going to look like. It's just a prototype. It's just a live uh, web uh, page you are looking at right now. We have a map of Africa because we don't want to sit down only in Nigeria. We have some uh, volunteers right now in Kenya. Uh, we actually also test the like uh, test the app by port of March during the Kenyan elections that was about two weeks time. Also, we have about three of them now the helping us out to test it. So from our map here you can see where we have the pins in red. If where we have the pins are countries that we presently have elections around. So if there's an election going on in any country in Africa, if we just once come to our web portal, we just check look for any of the things, so anywhere you find things, that is where we have the uh, election. So once you click on the country, it takes you directly to, to the country where they on us. So you'll be able to view videos and you'll be able to see pictures and results of the election. And in the future, we plan to expand this and create other social, uh, other social uh, capabilities. No, it's not only really for election monitoring, but presently we are working on uh, the election monitoring. Thank you. And at this time, I will present to you Ms. Odion Margaret Anabe. And her industry is agriculture and renewable energy. Please give her a round of applause. I plan to embark on intensive management programs and advocacy 
by collaborating with the Ministry of Science and Technology, Information, Agriculture, and Power. The opportunity is wide. Um, it will create jobs for lots of youth out there because if this venture is um, going into, it's like you can compare it with the uh, normal fossil fuel refinery in Nigeria. It will create jobs. It could create. Um, uh, you could use. You could use it as cosmetics, as pharmaceutical. You could use it in the energy in the, uh, sector and for the culture. Um, my customers, my, my target market will be the issue of energy, the issue of aviation, no Brazilian agricultural research cooperation, and selected others. Um, there are so put, many, pull out. okay, there, there are there, a few competent sellers actually okay. going to provide this production. One of them is Avatar Energy. But the, demand, the energy demand in Nigeria is so much. And I think that's where I come in. My challenges are financial constraints with land and the lack of government. The government is not interested in renewable energy. Um, my plan, I plan to, I plan to, my budget is about 17 million, 17.1 so million, and it covers the factor, postponed gas, and labor. I plan to plant a density of about 1,600 trees per hectare. And um, the return from investment is over 200%, 200%. I hope that if we must meet the energy requirements, we need to exploit all sources of energy with the global concern. There's even more need for renewable energy like ever before. I'm here to see a partnership on global ventures. I'm open for further discussions with you. First time, I'm a chance to partner you. Thank you.
where we had uh, to use Skype and then we have to use Ustream to converse with different people all over the world. And then two days we had 20 listeners. As part of it also we, we used that platform to also advertise our program that we also have a lot of people who are currently following us. Um, the idea of the project we also uh, the aim of the project is also we do online branding for a lot of clients and also do filmmaking and photography. But the whole essence of it is we do online, the online marketing and online broadcast program because we see that nowadays a lot of people believe the traditional media have the role and the voice. Because now you see that a lot of emerging online media begin to rise up. We have online radio, online TV platform, and we're creating that as um, as our as our um, as our step. And we have some of our clients that we work with: World Bank Institute, UNFPA Ghana, Youth Bridge International Ghana, and quite a number of clients um, that we work with. Um, okay. As part of all this, it's all about talking about media uh, because I'm. Very familiar with the media that um, currently, as part of the core areas that we're looking at, is online media, which is online radio and TV broadcast. Um, the challenges that we have currently, we've been doing this for a lot of clients and a lot of companies. Start setting, most of the, most of my clients are churches, the religious um, um, bodies, trying to set up their online broadcast where people can listen to them all over the world. Um, South African Thomas of Chambers, we work with them where we set up the, uh, the platform for them. And one of those challenging areas we also find in this country for online streaming, both radio and TV, is the internet bandwidth is very, very poor. And we felt like this are one of those challenges. And part of the media guide that we need for this project is we need the four 5D cameras, uh, which is four, which is 400,000 naira. A live streaming machine is 700,000 naira. Three video cameras, which is um, cost each, the cost of each of them is 300k. A Mac Pro book for editing and professional camera kit. The total is um, the total is 4.1 million naira. Thank you. Bring out your parents. It is all about the money, family. So I hope, ladies and gentlemen, you have been reflecting and listening in order to select, and then you can sign your donation card one of these wonderful ideas to help Africa's markets as a whole. The markets of the continent need to be helped. All right, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to break it up a bit. So instead of giving you all presentations at once, what we're going to do right now is have two short, kind of, sort of, speeches, kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of, speeches, kind of. So we're going to have the first speaker is Didi Munegi, and just a brief, as somebody called it, synopsis of the speaker. She has 14 years of experience in international development, and following her early years as a management consultant with McKinsey Company, she returned to Nigeria to fulfill her passion of promoting entrepreneurship and leadership development. She served as a pioneer executive director of the Faith Foundation and then established Leap Africa, which provides leadership, ethics, and management training and conduct leadership research, and NIA, which empowers female university students to achieve their highest potentials in life. Ndidi Muneli is the co-founder of AACE Foods, a social enterprise which preserves and processes fruits and vegetables in West Africa. She is a graduate of the Harvard Business School and the Watson School of the University of Pennsylvania, and she serves on numerous boards, and her most wonderful and best thing about her is that she's also my friend. She knows that that helps her just saying she's my friend, so I can easily say she is my friend and she knows. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mrs. Ndidi Wunemi.
lot more to share with you than I could ever uh, dream about. Um, and also Shoma Omerwa. I'm proud to say that I know her because we went to primary school together. That's how far back you go. So uh, I'm really proud of Chigal. You're doing great things. Um, but basically, I just wanted to share with you a few thoughts this evening. Um, it's been inspiring, inspiring listening to the young people who have come up to share their ideas with us. And um, as we sat at the table, my friends and I, who are entrepreneurs themselves, uh, reflecting on, on your presentation, we felt like, wow, isn't it nice to be so young again? Uh, with dreams, uh, energy, ideas about how you can change your lives and how you can change our country. Um, and I just have a few pieces of advice and words of encouragement for you. The first thing I would say to our young people is you can make your dreams come true. Um, it's a lot of work, um, takes a lot of discipline uh, and determination. All the ideas we shared here, I have to admit, might not turn out exactly how you planned. We were looking at some of the projections saying, hmm, you know, it's interesting that you put that up there. So business plans are good, projections are good, but half the time, they never turn out the way that you plan. But you have to be willing to take risks and be flexible enough to change your plan when curveballs come your way. The second thing I'll say is that people don't really invest in ideas. That might surprise you, because you've come up and shared ideas here. People invest in people. They invest in you because they believe you're credible, you're a person of integrity, you're going to do what you say you're going to do with the money that's given to you. You're not going to use it to buy a nice iPad or the next car or go on your first trip somewhere or something. You're actually going to plow it back into your business. And so as you as you take your first step and people see that you use the money wisely, you, the good success attracts more investment. And so keep that in the back of your mind to make sure that you have a track record of success um, and that you're credible with that track record. And then the third thing I would say is that partnerships are critical. In our country, many people are very scared of partnerships. They say, well, who can I trust? Somebody's going to steal my idea. And I always tell people, an idea is a dime of dozen. There's so many ideas, there are very few new ideas under the sun. And when I started listening to ideas like this was in 2000, when I came back to start the Bay Foundation with Mr. Faladiola, and we used to hear all these type of ideas back then in 2000. And the reality is that very few of my entrepreneurs actually ended up doing exactly what they said in their business plan. Um, because you have to follow your passion. And that's where I'll end. This issue of passion is critical. I remember one of our business plan competitions at Fake. Somebody put up a great idea of what they call, they were going to build uh, the Nigeria's first quail farm. I don't know how many of you know quail meat. And it was very interesting. Um, fantastic business idea. He had been to all the hotels in Lagos that said that they were looking for quail. And Tayo Adereo, who of blessed memory, one of the co-founders of Guarantee Trust Bank, asked the guy a question. He said, have you ever eaten quail meat? And the guy said, no. He said, well, <laughs> you can't come here and try to sell me a quail <laughs> when you've done the market research, the customers say they want it, you've done a very nice analysis, but you haven't tasted quail. What happened to him? He lost credibility immediately. And the truth is that as you plan to do the tropa farming or uh, you know election stop election rigging or even the whole concept around healthcare, you really have to prove to yourself that that's what you love. You know you love it. You're doing it not because it sounds sexy or it's the flavor of the month, but because you love it. You're passionate about it. You're willing to do it 24/7. If you're not, please don't bother. Because they're going to be pushed and shoved right in that and center. From my bio, you see that I've started quite a few organizations, some of them non-profits, some of them for-profits, and I've been working for 18 years. And I can tell you, for the last business we've started, this agri-business called Ace Food, 
there are many days you want to give up. And if I didn't feel like I was born to do this, I would have given up. We've been robbed at least three times. We've had Navdak Wahala. You know Navdak? Navdak Wahala. We've had, probably had to lay off almost all the staff that we started with. So we probably have very few of our pioneer staff because of issues of integrity. And yet, we're pushing forward. We've got some investors, we've won international business plan competitions, we've got at least numerous awards, we're in 50 supermarkets, we have some large commercial customer. But if we didn't believe in it, we would have given up. So you have to have passion, you have to have integrity, you have to be disciplined, and you have to believe that you were born to do this. And then you have to seek partnerships, ask people for help. You're young, you don't have a lot of connections. Build a board. Deep Africa is here to help you. Yadla is here to help you. There's so many organizations that will stand by you to make sure you achieve your dreams. And I look forward to celebrating your successes in the years to come. Congratulations and all the best. Thank you very much. Uh, interesting for people to want to be a part of that. 
Uh, okay, our competition, we have Grow Africa. Basically, what they do is support native by the African Union and the PAD and the World Economic Forum. But our strategy is not to compete, but to use our platform as a, as a means to, uh, to solve the problem. They want to solve the problem with Africa, we also want to do the same, then we just tag along with them. VC for Africa is community of entrepreneurs and investors, really promising companies in Africa. We intend to also do the same thing with them. Our target market is investors from around the world, founders, students, graduates, national service personnel. Uh, conclusion, many people think our idea is a great one. We're one of the top three winners of the Startup Wicked competition organized by Cosmo Foundation in the US. Uh, we got entry into the Dell Challenge competition. We are recently shortlisted uh, as one of the top 20 businesses in the YouTube business launch, but the final we're partners at Agri Business Africa. So this is a good place for you to put your money. Um, so what do we need? We're looking for partners to take equity in different countries where Agri will be operating. Currently, we need cash flow to complete web application, pay salaries, and run day to day activity of the business. And finally, we need a board of advisors who are passionate about Africa and have experience in agribusiness business to help. Uh, make this grow. In conclusion, I'll say that we strive to increase the capacity, productivity, and profitability of agribusiness entrepreneurs such that our platform becomes the first place of corporate investors looking to find these viable, sustainable businesses in the agribusiness industry. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you can invest in his sexy agri pro, anything more, and then in my case, move forward. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call right now another lady to come and give us a presentation. I have no idea where you are. Her industry is human development. Please give her a round of applause. Good evening, everyone. Permit me to stand here. My name is Tinto Badoe, I'm currently a student at the Nigerian Law School and I want to talk about my project. It's called Let's Day 1010. Um, growing up in Benin City as an only child, I didn't used to have many friends, but the children around the compound, one of our favorite parts time was playing 1010. Basically, 1010 is a hand clapping game. I know a lot of people know the game. And, but I'm redefining the concept of tension. All over Africa, there are charity places, um, people with issues, people who are not as fortunate as we are here, and um, people who don't have opportunity. And I'm creating solutions to an existing problem because I don't want to be among people who just complain without doing anything. Um, at least one in every ten person lives in extreme poverty around the world. And the statistics in Nigeria is 60.9% of Nigerians live in absolute poverty. I'm not trying to save the world, but I think we can start from home. Poverty means different things to different people. Kids without access to school, families without access to health care, um, child and mat maternal mortality rates, families living below one dollar a day. I believe that to tackle the African problem, we need African solutions. And I believe that um, the platform that gets me is um, incredible way to solve the African problem by creative philanthropy, wealth creation, and socially inclusive education. Let's get that ten job. <laughs> now basically I have four solutions and they are one the game, the fund, an academy and farms. The game basically is a micro savings for charity networking game and it involves participants registering on our website and inspiring nine other people to join them in forming local 1010 clubs in the various localities. And all they need to do is, you don't have to have a lot of money to help somebody. You don't have to be 
a damn good thing, you don't have to be a Bill Gates. You can just say 10 naira and you are helping somebody. And we intend to start a social, Pan African social innovation fund to inspire and empower continent wide social sector innovation, grown by a percentage of our annual revenue and third party offline and online donations. Um, thirdly, we want to start an academy to train social entrepreneurs in Nigeria. We know that NGOs have been bastardized. We know that a lot of people start NGOs for the purpose of making money and siphoning money without contributing value. So we want to set that straight by giving people the right information. And, well, we know that social entrepreneurs, most times people in the social sector have to depend on donations and investors. We want to sustain whatever we are doing such that in the next 20 years, we will still be on. And we feel that by having funds and having our own products, we could sustain whatever we want to do. That is how we play the intent game. We become a player, we register on our website, and for every tenure you have, you just become, and you inspire many other people and you get rewarded. Um, we believe that mobile payment is being adopted around the world, and we want to optimize that because we know that a lot of people are busy, so in saving your tenure, we don't want you to leave your offices or do anything because we believe that 1010 could be adopted by corporate organizations. So we want to partner with telecommunications companies and start mobile 1010 wallets where people can, for every recharge card that you recharge, you commit to charity and money is going towards charity. Um, this is something of our website. I forgot to talk about a specialized account. We want to partner with financial institutions in creating specialized accounts such that we can be transparent and accountable. So even though we're saying give to charity, um, let's help people, but we want to put mechanisms in place to see that whatever you pay, you can see your statement to your special let's pay and ten account and you can see it on our website. Um, they tell me to round up. <laughs> Finally, what do I want you to do for me? Well, you could adopt a solution, you could sponsor a project, you could donate, you could advise me because I think I need a lot of advice, and you could provide materials. Thank you very much.
the statement of the problem here, which myself and a colleague of mine, which we are presently working on, is that for you to actually process cassava, you have to be using a particular machinery called the flash dryer. What you see here on the picture is a mini flash dryer which processors, we call them processor in the agricultural field, what they use to process their cassava products and transfer them into their end products. When I say end products, I mean probably you want to make use of your cassava for tofu, or you want to make use of your cassava for gary, or you want to make use of your cassava for any other flour and water. So this is the machinery. But the machinery we are looking at here is called a flash dryer. And for you to actually um, build something like this, it runs into millions. For you to have a considerable amount, for you to have this type of setup, you should be able to spend about 15 to 10 million to set up something like this. But like we all know, most people that actually practice agriculture here in Nigeria don't really have enough money to make such a facility. So myself and my colleague, which who we are actually working together on this project, said, okay, yes, we have farmers present here in Nigeria, and we have processors, but the majority of them are poor, if I can put it that way. And I said, okay, what are the problems these guys are facing? Yes, so they don't have enough money to actually purchase this flash dryer. One. At the same time, they don't have the money, even though they get somebody to get the flash dryer, then they don't have the money to actually maintain the facility, they don't have the amount, the necessary funding for them to run the, run the machinery. And at the same time, they don't actually have the skill, the technical knowledge to actually, actually make this machinery work. So we said, okay, why don't we think of something that will make the life of these um, processors easier? So we came up with a particular idea. And we said, yes, let's come up with something as an engineer. So the picture you see here uh, is the local way we have people, majorly in the southwest of Nigeria and the south side, the way they do their manual, manual processing. Yeah, in Yoruba, in Nigeria here, if you want to have the final product of your carry, this is the term that Tabati in your carry. That's what people actually understand Yoruba. And this is an example of the way you do that in the local way. So, I mean, like, one of the things I noticed while I was traveling was something like this in the open shore. That's what we say to be precise. So, we thought of this and said, okay, why don't you come up with something that will actually help these guys out? And we said, yes, let's come up with an automatic tow dryer. This is an innovation that myself and my colleague actually constructed where we have the particular prototype which is functioning here in Nigeria in Benin. Um, the, auto, uh, the automatic port dryer is a very, very portable device. The device that actually helps you to dry the fresh. I don't know if we all know the way um, the processing takes place. You plant your cassava where it takes you about six months to actually harvest. After that, you peel up your cassava depending on the quantity you grow. You peel your cassava, you wash, you bath them, you squeeze them, and at the end of the day, you still have moisture present. But the particular process that is always complex for these processors to do is actually to dry them up and process them to the part and the particular um, end product they want. And it's that um, hidden process that is the complex part. So we said, okay, let's come up with something good that like these guys can actually make use of and at the same time something that's probably good for them to use. And we decided to come up with this. This is the picture of what we have. This is the prototype we have, the Uma, which is when presently controlling it. They didn't that they do stay. And this is some of the pictures here after our construction. Then we listed the merits of our machinery. But what we can see here is there's low running cost and improved economic profitability. For you to actually make use of this product, you don't necessarily have to have the technical skills to make it function. And if you have like two or three people, two or three processors, you can actually raise funds to get the machinery working. You could have as low as 700,000 to make this machinery working. And at the same time, you can use the particular automatic port dryers for other functions, such as not just only cassava, you can make it of easy dry of your nuts, you can make it of easy dry of the roots and cash crops. Um, in conclusion, um, my in conclusion, I'm here to say the use of automatic port dryer will help processors major in rural communities to produce their harvest products because it is cost effective compared to the flash dryer and it is a user friendly mechanical system. So we are actually considering um, a particular area in Oshun State. I don't know if anybody here knows somewhere they call um, Ibokun. 
in our show states, we have, we carried out an estimate of people who stayed there, and we know that we have 25,000 people in our show states, people who, I said, okay, how many, um, how many farmers do we have here? And we know since from the rough estimates we had, we, we noted that we had 20,000 20, people who are actually farmers, and we said, okay, for them to actually carry out their process of drying, if they make use of our technology, we said, okay, we can have four processors, four automatic projects that can actually function for them. And at the same time, the particular um, result the unit gets can actually happen. So um, I'm here to actually um, seek for advice and at the same time seek for funds for us to be able to help these farmers who are actually going to um, cassava processing and other agricultural fields. Thank you very much. Hey baby, pretty lady, can be lonely, can be cakey, okey dokey, pokey, in my sugar plum. Mr. Lady, let me hold you, let me fold you, hug you, squeeze you, kiss you, please you, please you, they call me to be loved. Oh, 